Hello everybody, this is Soft Sound Whispers. Today I'm going to be reading you a short story. Um, this is my first video reading. Um, and simply because I wanted to show you what a beautiful book that I'll be reading from. This was given to me on my 21st birthday, which is quite a few years ago. Excuse me, my fridge is making some strange noises as it decides to do as soon as I want to do a video. It's the ice machine. So, um, so there's lots of stories. There is a place was set for her at once, but with ordinary silverware, only seven golden settings existed, for they had been made especially for her godmothers. The old, old fairy muttered angrily, insult me will they, Delcy. A young fairy heard her and 
feared her and feared mischief. So she waited to be the last one to give the baby a gift, just in case the old one tried any tricks. The youngest fairy gave the baby great beauty. The next gave her wit. The third gave her graciousness. The fourth and fifth made her an excellent dancer and singer. And the sixth, her skill was musical. And the sixth gave her her skill with musical instruments. Then it was the turn of the old old fairy. Spitefully, she said, the princess will cut her finger on a spindle and die. Everyone was shocked to tears. The seventh fairy stepped up, saying, "Fear not, your Majesties. I can't undo this wicked wish completely." I can change it. When the princess cuts her fingers, she won't die. She'll sleep a hundred years and be awakened one day by a king's son. The king did what he could. He made a strict law forbidding spindles in his kingdom. But alas, the bad fairy's magic was too strong for him, and he was to find out. Sleeping Prince. 
princess was so lovely that even the sunlight dimmed brighter where she lay. Trembling, the prince knelt beside her, and since the hundred years were up, the princess awoke. She looked at the prince as if she'd known him always. Is it you, my prince? she whispered. I've waited so long. The prince's heart leapt for joy and he told him at once that he loved her absolutely. Meanwhile, the other sleepers had awakened too. Since they were not falling in love, they were all very hungry. The maid of all honour announced family dinner that was served. The prince helped the princess to rise. He didn't say that her dress, so lovely, was very old-fashioned. In style or out, to him she was perfectly beautiful. They dined well. While the quintet played the most popular music of a hundred years before, the prince wasted no time. After dinner, the prince's chaplain married them in the castle chapel, and the next day the prince went home and he told his family he'd lost his way and spent the night in the logger's cabin. He kept his marriage secret from his mother. She was an ogress by birth, had a bad temper and hated surprises. At the end of two years, the prince and princess had two children. The elder was a girl named Dawn and the second was a boy named Day. Soon after Day's birth, the old king died and the prince became king. He announced his marriage and brought home his little family with great ceremony. The next summer, he had to go off to war and he asked his mother to rule in his place. When he had left, his mother sent the young queen and her children to a country house in the woods. A few days later, she came to visit them. She called the cook and said, I want the little dawn for dinner tomorrow. Oh, your majesty, said the cook. Yes, said the queen in an urgent voice that the hungry ogress has. And mind you make a tasty sauce to go with her. The poor man knew that there was no arguing with an ogress. He got his knife and went to Dawn's room. The little girl ran up laughing and asked for a story. She was so sweet and merry that the cook couldn't find himself to hurt her and left her in peace. In the barn, he chose a young lamb and prepared it for the next day's dinner. Meanwhile, his wife and Dawn had hit Dawn in the hayloft. The ogress queen ate up with all, all the lamb greedily, saying, She's even tastier than I expected. The next Sunday, she said to the cook, I want little Day for lunch. He didn't protest, but hit Day and Dawn in the hayloft. Then he prepared a tender young goat for lunch. The ogress sent him her compliments on his cookery. So far, he had managed well. But then the ogre said, Now I shall eat the queen. Make the same serve, sauce you served with the children. This was going to be difficult, the cook thought. The queen was over twenty. Without un counting a hundred years sleep, the farm animals were too young and tender to resemble her. Fear for his own life made the cook decide to kill the queen. He went armed to her room. He was no sneak, respectfully. He told her that the instructions his mother-in-law her mother-in-law had given. Do as you must, said the queen, dipping her head back. I'll die gladly and be with my eaten children again. She didn't know that her children were safe. Her bravery disarmed the cook. No, my lady, I can't do it. You needn't die to see your children. I've hidden them safely. And I'll hide you too. The old queen will eat a deer in your stead. He hid her in the hayloft. The cook to young ate every bit very pleased. She planned to tell her son when he should return that wolves had devoured his family. But one day the ogress went strolling and happened to pass the hayloft. She heard children laughing and a mother's voice hushing them. She recognised the voices. It was the young queen with her children. The ogress was furious to see that she'd been tricked. She howled, get the biggest basin in the kingdom, set it in the courtyard. Before tomorrow morning, fill it with snakes and vipers, toes and a few spiders. The queen, the children and the cook will be thrown into it to die and I'm going to watch. The next day, the ogress's servants made everything ready to throw the young queen into the squirmy loads and basin. Suddenly, the king rode through the gate, home unexpectedly from war. What on earth is going on here, he demanded. No one dared speak. The furious ogress saw that she couldn't always have her own way, so she jumped right into the basin and was eaten up in an instant. The king was upset for 
for a while, but his distress gradually disappeared in the pleasure of being at home with his beautiful wife and his two pretty children. It's a colour picture. It's definitely a different story to the one that that I know of. I am. Um, the end part of that was certainly different, although to be honest. I said I think you're going to have 28 more.